questions or how do you want to do this, guys? Totally up to you. I think we can probably talk about that second half a little bit. Okay. Probably the best half that you've ever played this year. I was thinking the opposite. I thought that it was one of our better defensive halves. I believe other than uh, fouling them and letting them get a couple of uh, free throws, I think we, we stopped them two out of 17 or two out of 18 possessions. Um, and, and that's very good, obviously. Um, I, you know, you don't ever want to look in the rear view mirror, but I think if we would have played defense like that in the second half on Thursday night, we'd probably be in a little bit different position um, in the conference uh, rankings. But nonetheless, we did it tonight. We learned from that mistake, hopefully, and uh, we came out with the, with the vengeance and, and we were able to get the win. This game was a culmination of three things that you kind of talked about. You got rebounded, then you won the turnover battle, you got to the line, you made eight more free throws. Is those three things happening? Yeah, I mean, any sporting contest is the same, just like in football. You don't turn the ball over and you get more possessions, right? You've got a better chance to, to win the game. And uh, I was really impressed and uh, happy with the fact that we only turned the ball over three times in the second half, right? I thought uh, if we could keep our turnovers over 10 to 12, we were going to put ourselves in a good position. I, you know, I, I thought that uh, – <clears throat> from the other side of the ball, I thought that we needed to force more turnovers than we actually did, but we played a good game defensively without fouling, so you, you didn't have to end up forcing turnovers. So, nonetheless, um, if we can if we can harness that defensive intensity in the second half and you know keep it 40 minutes moving forward, we'll give ourselves a chance. Uh, John scored the first 17 second half points for the team in a row. Uh, how, how big of a factor was he during halftime during the conversations of getting the offense kind of heated up a little bit? Yeah, well, well, shoot, he had a lot of rest, you know. <laughs> he sat his butt on that bench the first half for a long time with fouls. Um, so he was rested up and ready to go. But, yeah, anytime some guy come, comes into the, into the game and scores 17 and, and kind of carries you, man, you'll take it. I mean, he was fantastic. He's shooting behind, you know, ball screens when those guys went under. And, and uh, you know, other than probably the one heat check, they were all good shots and within the offense. But uh, obviously, we've talked about it several times. I mean, Don's a very good player and uh, a very important piece to our basketball team. Really starting over for uh, MTSU, you look at the three corners. They hit eight in the first half, um, which I thought was pretty much their offense. The second half, you held them, what, three, 20, three out of 22. Did you guys do anything different? Do you take credit for that, or did they just start missing? Or? Well, a little bit of both. I mean, uh, I'm going to take credit for changing the fact that number 14 can shoot, you know, and uh, we, we have certain a uh, rating system, if you will, for uh, shooters, non-shooters, and kind of middle range guys. And uh, a shooter is a Curry for Steph Curry. And then Kobe is a kind of can shoot but can drive as well. And then a Rondo is a guy that can't shoot, so you don't have to guard him, obviously, as close. Um, that young man, uh, Jalen Jordan, came in as a, uh, as a Kobe, and by the end of the night, he was definitely a Curry. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a weird game. I mean, he was 40% in the uh, non-conference season from the three, and then in conference season, he's been in the 20s. Um, but that doesn't mean he can't shoot, obviously, and, and he proved it tonight. Well, I, I don't watch the bench a whole lot, but I know the energy in the building was good tonight. I mean, that was had to have been our, our biggest crowd of the of the year, um, and they were fantastic. And when Tegan's diving on the floor, those guys are, are ramped up and ready to go. And when Tyrone, you know, we're getting a defensive stop and we're running in transition and he's getting a dunk or he's getting an alley-oop, and, you know, the guys are running with him. It, and sometimes people don't understand this, but like Tyrone's coming to get the dunk and Enoch's running stride by stride and jumping. I mean, that means that those guys are cheering for one another and they're enjoying uh, the moment with one another. That, you know, that's the mark of a good team. We've got to continue to build and move forward with all of that. Ronnie was another player tonight that has continued these past yeah, yeah, Thursday's game and tonight's game. Uh, he has 16 points tonight. Again, some more paint touches for him. How big is he going to be heading into lots of today? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have our, our, uh, our work cut out for us. I mean, the Bacho kid's a good player. Um, you know, he can block shots. He can score on, on the block. He, can, uh, he runs really well. Um, he can shoot a little bit. So, you know, it's going to have to be a team effort. But Rodney was great in the first half. And I thought that Baba played good 
as well. I mean, he missed a couple shots here and there, but he got to the free throw line. He made most of his free throws, and he rebounded. Um, so I thought he played with much more energy tonight. And, and again, between those two guys, I don't know what their final numbers were, but if we can get you know 25 and 15, that's a pretty good level of production out of the post. Well, I mean, the same point of emphasis that we have, you know, our, our flaws obviously are turning the basketball over and uh, not playing um, with intelligence. You know, we'll take some crazy shots at times. Um, you know, we'll maybe make a pass that in, instead of trying to, you know, put it between two people, we make a pass over here and reverse the ball and then we get a, a really good post feed, things like that. We've got to be safer um, with the basketball and then obviously rebounding. You know, we were great early in the year getting to the free throw line, and, and we've been up and down. So, really, those three things, that's what's going to gain you, um, you know, more possessions. And, and typically, the team with the more possessions wins. Of course, this game is tied at, at half. I always wonder how you feel about tied at half. Do you feel good about this one? Do you, know, were you angry or anything? Because I mean, where were you at uh, um, Yeah, I don't know. From a defensive standpoint, I was not happy. Um, but I thought that our effort was good, and I thought that offensively we did some good things. You know, 38 points and a half, I believe, is what we had at half. We're tied up. I mean, that's equating to usually 80, 85 points. And, you, you know, typically if you can score 85 points, you're going to win your Division One basketball game. A lot of that production did come in the paint. It seemed like you guys were really kind of camping out a little bit there or really attacking it uh, maybe, maybe a little more than usual against this team. Well, you know, again, when Rodney and, and Baba are playing well, you should go to them. Just like when Don comes out in the second half and, and uh, scores 17 straight. I mean, you set ball screens for him and, and try to get him downhill and let him shoot pull-ups and layups and threes. So, you know, when, when guys are playing well, you know, it, it just makes sense to try and get them as many shots as we can get them. We good? Thanks, guys.